I know, I know, recently I've done reviews on quite a few AIO liquid coolers, but your Nicholas is not done yet. In fact, I have one more lying around that's still waiting to be reviewed. Today, however, for a change, we are not going to take a look at one of those super duper great bargain deals you can make. Actually, I'll be putting a fairly pricey all-in-one liquid cooler to the test. I'm talking of the Thermaltake Flow DX RGB240. As the naming already suggests, it's the 240mm version of the cooler. It features addressable RGB lighting and comes with Thermaltake's own RGB ecosystem along with one or the other extra gimmick to play around with. So now please remain calm when I name you the price of this unit. Right now it comes in at roughly 180 US dollars. Sometimes less, sometimes even for a little more. That for sure is one hefty price tag for a 240mm AIO cooler. What makes it so special? Can we really expect it to perform better than the competition? Or why else do we see such a high price? Well, that's what we'll try to find out today. And of course, I'll try to answer the question, is the Flow DX RGB240 even worth your hard-earned money? In terms of what comes included, it's exactly what I would have expected, even before unboxing all that. It's the usual stuff, well except for one or the other item, such as this rather unusual RGB or rather ARGB controller. This marks the entry into Thermaltake's own RGB ecosystem for us, whether we like it or not, meaning we don't get those usual universal 4 or 3 pin RGB connections, but proprietary ones instead. You know my opinions on that, I'm not necessarily a fan of that, but for many such an organized ecosystem makes things easier. Basically easier, more centralized type of controlling and quite important, especially for novice builders, doing all the cabling job is made much much easier, since usually there are less cables that need to be connected, as seen here, because fan and RGB cables are combined into just one plug. And yeah, it can also be nice to have everything in one place when it comes to software all can be controlled from a single piece of software that applies to both fan speed and RGB lighting. So I certainly do see some advantages in it, but I'm probably getting a little too old already and prefer the universal solution with separated plugs etc. Of course this means I'd have to deal with more messy cables. You hook up the controller to one of your internal USB headers on your motherboard. Those that don't actually want to do that still get a fairly primitive way of changing RGB effects. That's what that dip switch is for. Trust me, it's not as great as it sounds. Those of you that pay close attention to AIOs may have guessed it by now what the manufacturer behind this thing is. Surprise, surprise, it's Acetec. A ton of brands decide to go with Acetec and there's nothing wrong with that, but it kinda already gives away what kind of performance there is to expect, at least for me. The 27mm thick aluminum radiator is of fairly decent quality, however by no means manages to stand out from the masses anymore. Similar things can be said about the pump unit. The design, at least for my taste, is not bad at all, but at a price of about $180, I'd prefer to see less cheap plastic, at least on the outside. What I find to be a bit of a bummer is the fact that the manufacturer apparently didn't even try to equip this unit with metal fittings. I mean, it sure is no big deal, but at $180, a bit of a letdown in my opinion. Thermaltake's very own Ring Duo RGB fans, on the other hand, deserve great praise. These are of very good quality, even come with good anti-vibration pads and are pretty quiet in operation, even when setting the fan speed to the maximum of about 1500 RPM. Obviously, it would hardly make any sense if it was just the fans that were quiet, but a pump wasn't. So it goes without saying that Acetec pump, generally speaking, is pretty quiet too. For a silence-oriented PC, today's Flow DX RGB seems to be a pretty good candidate. Something that gets more and more important nowadays, even with AIO units, is the length of the tubing. At 326 millimeters, it's decent, but for specific configurations and modern cases, it can be a bit on the short side. The material is rubber by the way, and the tubing is nicely weaved as you can see. So when it comes to looks, Thermaltake has done a fairly good job overall. 
And while admittedly, aesthetics shouldn't really play too big of a role when it comes to CPU coolers, it's quite obvious the manufacturer did put big emphasis on that. There are a bunch of you guys that simply can't stand RGB anymore. Others still enjoy it and can't get enough of it. I look at it neutrally. Now in order to control all these LEDs, but also fan speed, thermal takes so-called TTRGB plus software is required. That piece of software is pretty versatile. Also worth mentioning is the fact that TTRGB plus products by Thermaltake are also compatible with Razer's ecosystem, Razer Chroma. So you can actually synchronize the lighting between those products. Aside from that, Thermaltake also does offer some gimmicks such as voice control via app, etc. to change settings and whatnot. I personally find that a bit silly and unnecessary, but well, it's something to play around with for some, I guess. What's a little more interesting though is the performance, because as nice as aesthetics are, a CPU cannot be cooled by that alone. The installation, as always with Aesthetic Designs, pretty much always remains the same, fast and simple, nothing I would complain about. Now since I'm still in my transitional phase when it comes to CPU cooler testing, I'll be testing with an older Intel i7-7700K that has been overclocked, as well as with a fresh AMD Ryzen 7 3800X, and these are the results I got. So not really a surprise, the Flow DX RGB240 isn't necessarily a liquid cooler that stands out from the competition performance-wise. No, actually it delivers pretty comparable performance as almost every other 240mm AIO does. Well, except for a few exceptions that is. So honestly, there's not much I can say here really. The performance is more than okay. The noise levels are looking a little better though than with many other units I tested. By that I mean, it's quieter than the majority LD be it not the absolute quietest out there. The problem I'm seeing here is the price. At a steep $180 as opposed to the offered cooling performance, that's way too high. I think $120 to $130 would be more appropriate here. It seems the expensive RGB ecosystem by Thermaltake is both a curse and a blessing along with those little gimmicks. I believe this eats up a big portion of their budget. Well, at least one can say the controller not only can be used with this liquid cooler, but other compatible products too. Furthermore, the controller does allow for extension. So the bottom line here is, short and sweet, the performance is pretty normal, not really something that stands out, the noise levels are great, pretty quiet, and aesthetics as well as the ease of use due to the centralized approach for controlling performance and lighting make it a good choice for novice builders with less experience. One big downside being the price. At the end of the day, it comes down to you to decide if it's the right liquid cooler for you. From a technical standpoint, today's Thermaltake Flow DX RGB240 definitely does deliver, even though it seems most of the focus went into lighting. With that being said, thanks so much for watching and sticking around for so long. I hope to see you back in my next video.